Hello, and welcome back to another Daily Top 10's Top 10 video. You might look down at yourself and think, yeah, I'm totally in control of this sack of meat. But although you do have a huge amount of conscious control over what you do, there's a whole mysterious world of reactions and decisions that happen in the murky pool of your subconscious. Obviously, it's great having a subconscious to deal with your reactions and motions. Without it, you'd have to do trigonometry every time you wanted to catch a ball, and you'd walk around all day saying, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, try not to die. What was next? So let's take a journey into the great unknown and how it's working for you and against you. It's the top 10 things you do unconsciously. If you want to prove that you are master of your own consciousness, let's do a few quick tests. Ready? Touch your left ear now. Cross your eyes. Okay. Now press subscribe. All right, I think you're functioning correctly. Number 10, micro expressions. Although you try your best to be as cool as a very thermally challenged cucumber, when your ex walks into the room with their new yoga teacher partner who can bend things you don't even have, but you don't do a very good job no matter how well you think it's going. Micro expressions are the double agents of your face, sending secret reports out to the opposition on what you're really thinking. Some people who know exactly what to look for can spot them directly, but we all read them subconsciously. If you've ever met someone who gave you a bad vibe, but you couldn't work out what was off about them, this is likely their micro expressions showing that they are secretly planning to murder your face off. Number nine, sound locate time. Your body has a lot of internal clocks that are used to measure very different time scales. One gives you an idea of what part of the day it is, so you know when to sleep even if you're in a windowless room. Another tracks the changes in years, and then your reactions work in milliseconds. But the fastest clock is for your ears. Have you ever thought about how you know where a sound is coming from? If a waiter drops a glass in a restaurant, how come everyone turns to exactly where it happened and then laughs? Well, your ears are about 20 centimeters apart so when sound travels from an event to you, it hits one ear very, very fractionally before the other, and then your brain automatically triangulates where the sound originates from. It's a difference of just millionths of a second. Your brain does math without you. It's a closet nerd. Number eight, say ow. Although languages can be very different, you would expect certain things to be similar. For example, the noise a cat makes will probably be something like meow everywhere. Although, having said that, some Koreans say mung mung as the dog noise, so we're not sure what happened to their dogs or ears. But the strangest one is the noise we make when in pain. It's a reflex sound. You stub your toe or burn your hand and then you say, well, it depends. The Germanics and English speakers say something like ow. Latins have more of a ah, and Mandarin has the famous aya. It's been said that American border guards used to pinch kids on the arm to see what noise they made, exposing where they were from. Number seven, confirmation bias. If you have ever read the comment sections for anything on the internet, and we're not recommending that you do that, then you'll know that the only thing that we can all agree is that none of us is going to change our mind. Confirmation bias is a psychological phenomenon that shows when you present someone with information that contradicts what they think, they are more likely to strengthen their belief rather than change it. It's like we say, oh, you think I'm wrong now? Let me show you just how wrong I can really be. Take that, truth. Kellyanne Conway's Alternative Facts is a great way this has been demonstrated. 
Number six, anchoring. Anchoring is probably something horrible on UrbanDictionary.com. If it isn't, it should be. One of you should go and create it. But we love to anchor onto things. Change is big and scary and tiring, so it's much easier to just get your beliefs and stick to them. The first facts we find on a subject are much more important to us than anything that comes later. This is why it's so hard to rid yourself of childhood beliefs. Anchoring is used by politicians to great effect because the way you introduce an idea sets the tone for how people will talk about it. Political polling is often used as an influencing tool. They don't really care what you think about an issue, but if they ask you a question about a topic framed in a negative way, then it might influence how you begin to think about that topic, if it's a newish idea. Number five, drumming your fingers. We all love a good fidget. We pull our hair, bite our nails, and blink too much. A lot of these can go unnoticed unless you're watching the person. But the one you can't escape is the finger drumming. In times of stress or impatience, many people drum their fingertips on the tabletop or tap their desk with a pen. If you've ever been in an exam, then you'll remember it being soundtracked by these nervous Dave Grohls. Number four, face race recognition. It's a standing joke that all people of other races look the same. And this is true of each race. We are nowhere near as good at identifying people with different skin colors and features to ours. But why is this? Why do we suddenly become like a grandma without her glasses simply because of this difference? Well, it's really just exposure. If you grew up in a multicultural environment, you'll be much better at identifying across races. When a white person sees a white face, they look at it holistically, meaning they take the face as one thing, seeing how the features relate. But for many, when they see a black or Asian face, they are seeing the race first and the features will be looked at individually, rather than as a whole picture together. Number three, not read all the word. After you've got through the early stages of learning to read, you don't look at each individual letter, you take the word as a whole, a little bit like in the face recognition that we just talked about. But did you know that if the first and last letters are in the correct place, you can often mix up all the other letters and read the words just fine. For example, Sorry, we rickrolled you. Number two, Freudian slip. A Freudian slip is when you intend to say one word, but you accidentally say a mother. According to the famous psychoanalyst, these slits reveal what's happening in your head and that we were all repressing our inner moist thoughts. There is plenty of disagreement over the reason behind it though. Many specialists in linguistics think it's just our brains trying to auto-predict what the next word is going to be. But don't worry about it too much as analytics have shown that the average person slips up on fewer than 22 words out of 15,000. Just be really careful if you ever have to discuss Joe Blob's sick duck or a smart fella's toolkit. Number one, looking for the curb. Navigating about the world can be confusing, even when you're just on your own two feet. But it would be a whole lot harder if it wasn't for your brain's incredible navigation system. And one of the main things you subconsciously use to navigate is the curb. In 2016, scientists at John Hopkins University found that you can categorize boundaries into two sets those which you can walk over and those which you can't, like a waist height wall and above. So you're basically acting like a video game character. 
Just be careful you don't end up swimming in the air like one of those Skyrim weirdos. Thanks for watching another Daily Top 10's Top 10 video. And remember, it's our duty to entertain and yours to subscribe. Hello everybody, welcome to the White House News Conference. Good to see you all here. And yes it is, uh, Emily from Fake News, good to see you Emily. And of course uh, David from the Daily Mail, just as fake news, you, you know it. Look, the White House and Trump especially would like to uh, let the world know of his favourite YouTube channel, which is called Daily Top Tens. Yes. Boring. Look, shut up, Kimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Little Kimmy. Mm. Look, the president believes that every member of the world, and especially the US of A, should be subscribed to this channel. It's very important. Due to his passion and commitment to signing up every citizen to daily top tens as part of Trump Care, the president will, effective immediately, right now, yes, be passing a new bill to make this law. The bill is as follows. I, Donald J. Trump, hereby order all my people of the U.S. of A's to, with immediate effect, subscribe to daily top tens. The, this will strengthen the economy by giving us things to watch at work, improve our corrupt education system by giving kids the opportunity to watch uncorrupted videos, uh, to watch about random crap, and uh, keep the elderly entertained with uh, videos that make no sense at all. Yes, uh, yes. You. When will this bill take effect, and what are the penalties for those who do not obey the rules? Look, uh, now, Donald J. Trump vows that uh, those who do not subscribe lose all internet connection and access to YouTube with immediate effect. Powerful stuff. Look, thanks for listening to the White House fake news team. Good night, and subscribe.